Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to share with you how to determine whether a series is a geometric series or not. And if it is a geometric series, how do we determine whether that series is convergent or divergent? And if we have a convergent series, how do we find its sum? Let's get started. Let's look at this uh, first uh, series here. To show that this is indeed a geometric series, so we need to find that uh, common ratio. And what is a common ratio? It's a constant that we have to multiply to a term to get the next term. So what are we going to multiply to, let's say, 4 to get the next term, which is uh, negative 8 thirds? So in this uh, case, we have to multiply it by negative 2 over 3. Similarly, to get the next term here, which is uh, 16 over 9, then we have to multiply that negative 8 thirds by, again, negative 2 over 3. So if we multiply this by negative 2 thirds, then the product is 16 over 9. And again, to get the next term, so we need to multiply this 16 over 9 by negative 2 thirds. So therefore, we have a common ratio, and this is a geometric series. So this negative 2 thirds here, is our common ratio denoted by r so r is equal to negative uh, two-thirds and because the absolute value of r absolute value of the common ratio absolute value of negative two-thirds which is equal to two-thirds is less than one this implies that this series here this geometric series is convergent so this is convergent and if we have a convergent geometric series then we can find its sum and the sum is given by s is equal to the first term a over 1 minus the common ratio. And of course, in this case, our a is equal to 4. So that's the first term. So the sum of this series is equal to 4 divided by 1 minus uh, r. So that is negative 2 thirds. This is equal to 4 over 1 is 3 over 3. So this is over 5 thirds. So this is the same thing as 4 times 3 over 5. So, which is equal to 12 over 5. So, the sum of the series is equal to 12 over 5. Let's look at the next series. To show that this is a geometric series, we need to write it in the form summation a r raised to n or in the form summation a r to the n minus 1. And the advantage of this form here is that if the series is convergent, this a here already represents our first term. Of course, if the summation starts with n equals 1. But if you are just determining the convergence or divergence of a geometric series, then you may write it in this form. And this will tell you already the common ratio r. And if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, then the series is convergent. Otherwise, the series is divergent. Now, let's uh, try to write this uh, series in any of this uh, form. So this uh, series here can be written as uh, summation from n equals 1, 2 raised to 2n can be written as uh, 4 raised to n. And then rule and exponents, let's write that as pi times uh, pi raised to negative n. And applying rule and exponents again, pi raised to negative n can be written as 1 over pi to the n. So therefore, we can write our series in the form summation from n equals 1 to infinity of pi times 4 over pi quantity raised to n. So we have written already our series into this form and we'll be able to determine already the convergence or divergence of this uh, series because we know already the common ratio and the common ratio is equal to 4 over pi. But of course, if you want to write it in this uh, form, so you have to take away from this one factor of 4 over pi and you can now write your series a summation from n equals 1 of pi times 4 over pi so that is equal to 4 and then times 4 over pi raised to n minus 1 and still the common ratio is equal to 4 over pi so our common ratio is equal to 4 over pi so this implies that absolute value of r is equal to absolute value of 4 over pi, which is, of course, the same thing as 4 over pi. And because uh, pi is less than 4, then this uh, quotient here is greater than 1. Well, you may also write it as greater than or equal to 1. And we know that this uh, series here is divergent 
if absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. So we conclude in this case that the given series is divergent. So it doesn't have a sum. Let's move to the next series. Again, let's uh, try to write this uh, in the standard form of a geometric series, either in the form a r to the n or a r to the n minus 1. So if you want to write this as a summation of a r to the n minus 1, so we need to produce uh, an expression here that is in the form of something raised to n minus 1. So to do that, so let's uh, write this one as summation from n equals 1 to infinity. So let's uh, factor e raised to n minus 1 from the numerator. Then by rule on exponents, we have to multiply this by e raised to negative 1 in order to get a product that is e raised to n minus 2. And then also from the denominator, so we can also factor 3 raised to n minus 1. And then the remaining factor should be, so 3 raised to, what should we add to n minus 1 to get n plus 1? So we need to add 2. So we have to multiply that by 3 squared. So therefore, we can write our series, a summation from n equals 1 to infinity of, so this part here can be written as e over 3 and then raised to n minus 1, and then times rule on exponents. So e raised to negative 1 is 1 over e, and then 3 squared is 9, so that is 1 over 9e. Therefore, from this, we'll be able to determine the first term of our series, and that is 1 over 9e, and the common ratio r is equal to e over 3. And what is the value of this e? e is approximately 2.72. So because that is less than 3, so in this case, absolute value of r is also equal to e over 3, and it is less than 1, because e is less than 3. So this implies that the geometric series is, so this given series, which is a geometric series, is convergent. So now, what is the sum of this geometric series? So the sum of this uh, geometric series, again, we denote it by S, is equal to the first term over 1 minus common ratio. So this is equal to 1 over 9E over 1 minus E over 3. And we can simplify this uh, complex fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the LCD of the little fractions, which is 9E. So uh, doing this multiplication in the numerator and in the denominator, we'll get here 1 over 9e and then minus 3e squared. And this is already the sum of this uh, series. So keep in mind that uh, 3e squared here is actually less than 9e. So the sum is uh, positive. So this is the sum of our series. So this is equal to 1 over 9e minus 3e squared. Let's move to the last problem. So we're going to do a similar thing as what we did in the previous problem. So this series here can be written as summation from n equals 1 to infinity. And in the numerator, we already have that power n minus 1. So let's uh, produce this uh, power also from the denominator. So the denominator can be written as 4 raised to 2n times 4. And then 4 raised to 2n is equal to... 16 to the n. So we can write this as summation of 9 raised to n minus 1, 16 to the n, and then times 4. So we can write this as summation from n equals 1 to infinity, 9 raised to n minus 1, and then let's produce that power n minus 1 as well in the denominator. So 16 raised to n minus 1. So the remaining factor in the denominator is 16 times 4, which is equal to 1 over 64. So we can write our series, a summation from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 64, times the quantity 9 over 16 raised to n minus 1. So here, the first term, a, is equal to 1 over 64, and the common ratio is equal to 9 over 16. And because the absolute value of this common ratio, which is equal to 9 over 16, is less than 1, this implies that the given series is convergent. So we can find the sum of this geometric series here, and the sum is 
is given by a over 1 minus r which is equal to 1 over 64 and then over 1 minus 9 over 16. So again, we can simplify this complex fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 64 which is the LCD of the little fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. And this will give us 1 over 64 minus 64 over 16 is 4. 4 times 9 is 36. So that is minus 36. So this is equal to 1 over 28. So the sum of our series is 1 over 28. Thank <laughs> you.